everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is my last tutorial of 2017. Um, so yeah, it's been a good year, I would say. I'm, I'm really pleased with what I've uh, achieved and done so far. So I thought a nice way to end the year would be to do a calendar for the following year. So I did do a calendar about six months ago and um, really, really love that one. And that's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's just numbers. So it's just the, the month and the year. Um, and it can be used year upon year upon year. If you haven't seen that one, I will share the link now for you. So that's one alternative. The other one is this one. Now, those of you that follow me know that I live in China. China do sell calendars and I can get them online, but they're in Chinese in the stores. Um, and they don't have the Western holidays that we would obviously um, have in our calendars. And also, I like a big calendar. I like one where I can have an overview of the month. I can write everything on. So here I can write my tutorials when they're going up. I can also fit birthdays in there. You know, when I'm flying to back to the UK, things. I need a nice big calendar. So I've made my own up. This is a proper DIY project. I've printed these off as free printables from the internet and I'll share all those links on my blog. I've made all the letters from um, the We Are Memory Keepers mini alphabet punch board which is brilliant. Um, so I've done that and I've kept this gold theme. I've done little elements obviously February the month of love and, and so on and so forth and I've gone through them there um, which I'll show you in more detail. But I just wanted something that was going to fold flat if I need to move it around and then it stands up perfectly and then each one can flip over as I move on to the next month. So this is really, really good. It fits purpose perfectly for me. But for my needs, I need a nice big calendar. So let me crack on and show you how we made it. Okay, so you are gonna need, I've got lots of bits and pieces here. So this is this wonderful mini alphabet punch board um, that I got from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, I'm not gonna be showing you how to use this today. I'm gonna do a separate tutorial for this, but this is what it looks like. And this is the book that you get with it with all of the alphabet and how to cut each one out. So it's brilliant, okay? So that's what it looks like. I'll share all the links. And as I said, I will do a separate tutorial on that one. So this is a proper DIY calendar for the reasons that I mentioned. Um, so this is all the bits that you're gonna need. The paper pack that I've used is this one here, which is Ducross Paper Mania Capsule Elements and it's their pigment. Um, paper pack. Get 36 and the pack is exactly the same um, weight and size as the Love Santa one that I used over Christmas. This is the 12 by 12 and again you can see the other kind of um, styles that you get so I really like that one. So I've already pre-cut everything and I have done it all around this um, printable that I got off the internet and again I'll share all those links for you. So you know, I'm showing you the process and how to put it together. You can adapt it to any size that you want um, and any design really that you want. This is, like I said, proper DIY. So um, I have got here a piece of eight and a quarter by 11 and five eighths or 11 and three quarters. So it's just your default A4 paper, but you can obviously use the um, letter paper size as well. You just have to cut down accordingly. Then the paper here, this is the one that I'm gonna do on top. So I'm gonna do July. Why July I left to the last, I don't know, but that's the one I'm doing. And this sits nicely in the middle of this, giving you a nice border. And this piece measures at seven and three quarters by 11 and a quarter. Okay, so that's going on there. Then that's obviously my printable. Now what I've done is on each one, as I briefly showed, I've cut out wherever there were no more days because you know they have the blanks along here just to fill it up. But I've cut that out because what I'll be doing is sticking this on here, sticking this up towards the top left hand side there. And then I pre-cut the shortened word July or Jewel. And that is gonna go inside like so okay I could have fitted I could have fitted I could have fit all four letters on this one but I wanted to keep it the same throughout so they're all just um, shortened um, words so that's going to go there and then I've got to go on top of that I've just die cut some little flowers 
which I'm going to pop like so just to decorate that one up and I've got some little embellishments there as well so I'm going to go along and just get all of that stuck down okay so there's that page all done you can see there it's lovely those letters look really nice and um, I've put the little embellishments on there as well on the flowers and everything so that one is done so I've got a load here that I've already done so these are all ready to go now what I'm going to do is just take off these ring binders and I picked these up I've used these before in my perpetual calendar these are actually from the same pack still left over pick them up from Walmart you get a box and um, they're no more than a couple of dollars a few pounds and um, I'll share all the links and you get a variety of sizes there as well so you don't have to have three. I've, I found four too much. It's that same thing. Four was too much. Two I didn't maybe feel was enough because of the size of the paper that I'm doing. But I guess if you're maybe a bit smaller, then you could just have two um, if you're doing 12 by 12 pieces because that would be even bigger. And you could do that. Then um, you would need to have four. So I'm using three. Now what I've done is I've just measured in um, from the outside so to the middle part there it was two and seven eighths so you want to come in two and seven eighths from each of the sides here to give you that these two outer ones and then for the middle one again it was just two and seven eighths or if you just mark the middle point of the two that you've done just mark a middle point and then do that hole punch those then what you need to do is you don't need to measure every one all you can do then is put the one that you've pushed the holes out of and just grab your hole punch and basically just line it all up, make sure they're completely in place and just put the hole punch back in the hole and just punch through and then you will get an exact because even if you use your pencil marks you know you could be just ever so, you know a small mill out and if you keep doing that on every one then by the time you've done all 12 there'd be a considerable difference whereas if you do this and just hold each one in place like so you know now that that is exact as all the others okay so January February March April I love May May with a bubble movie May June July and then August September October November don't really like the V it does a weird V in that thing and then there's December so they are all now done okay when you do your holes obviously if you're using the same size that I am you would have done them as I've done here I did come down let me just do that measurement as well yeah quarter of an inch okay but also bear in mind is that if you're changing the sizes of this just make sure that you've got enough room for your binders your ring binders to go through all of these all of this card it's a good inch maybe yeah about an inch thick so let me just line this all up just pop these back through again and you have to remember that they need to be able to loop right around so there needs to be like this quarter of an inch inside the ring plus this quarter of an inch inside the ring as it flips around so you don't want to be doing your hole really far down because it just won't turn it won't fit so have a play around on some um, you know some spare paper some scraps first until you're happy with what you've got and then take the plunge and do it so like I said I've got the perpetual calendar and uh, calendar and I explain it the same in that one as well so there you go so that is my calendar base now um, uh, you know uh, pages already so now on to the base done is I've got all the strong like not quite chipboard but the strong card that is the the top and the bottom sheets of the paper packs that I've purchased and I'm going to be sticking them together like so and then another two together like so so I've got four sheets of this now before you stick it all together you have to put these little inserts in okay these are going to be the hinges on each corner to make it super strong and then I've got the base here so depending on what paper what card you're using if you've got really strong card that isn't going to bend with the weight of all of that leaning against it then you will only need two pieces of this size that I'm about to give you okay so this measures at 12 by eight and three quarters so four pieces if you're using similar to what I've got two pieces if you've got really strong like a chipboard kind of thing then for the base again I've reinforced that with two pieces that are going to go back to back again if you've got one strong piece and you only need one and that's four by twelve 
Okay, and then I have here the three hinges. So these measure, oh, I've already put my score lines in. So they're two by 12, and then I've just taken a little notch off of each end, which I'll talk you through in a moment. <clears throat> Okay, so I'll get rid of my scoreboard now because that's everything done. So let's first of all grab one of our hinges. So these hinges were two by 12, and what I've done is I just scored at one inch through the middle there along that two inch side. So just score straight down the middle at one inch. Burnish it, okay? And then with the folded side facing you, you just want to cut a slight like, notch off the corner there just to give you that kind of arrow shape, it just means you won't get anything hanging out over the sides when we come to put it together. So basically what is going to happen, so this is the thing, if you don't have two pieces, if you're just using one piece, and basically if this is your one piece, you will stick this on the inside like so, along there, like that, okay? So you're creating the top part of our um, stand. If we're using two pieces like I am, I just didn't want to have that on show. So this is going to go inside like that, and then this is going to stick on top. So let me remove that there. So I've got this piece, then I'm putting the hinge in, and then I'm sticking that over the top. And it, not only is it going to reinforce, but it also just keeps it nice and tidy, and it hides that piece so you don't see it. If you've got 12 by 12 super strong card, again, and you know what you're doing, you could do this as all one continuous piece. You don't have to have the separate bits like I've done. So I'm going to go ahead with my wet glue. Okay, so you stick this one like so. Then you grab another hinge and you're going to stick this one along this side here. Okay, so I'm just putting that one inside, just folding the whole thing over there, just so that glue all sticks down. Okay, so that's nice and stuck. So I've got my piece there with the two hinges either side, and then this piece here is going to go right over the top there, sitting nicely, just to cover it all up. Okay, so just go ahead and stick all of that then down. Flip it over and grab your other two pieces or your one piece that you may have and again we're going to then fold this one keep one of these down on top fold this one over like so and then stick that on top and then again put your other hinge at the bottom there so you have that one there that one there and stick that all down on top like so. Okay? Okay, so that's that all, all stuck down. So you can see now I've got this kind of triangle um, shape coming together here. So now before we put the base on, and I'll talk you through that piece in a minute, grab one of your ones, because what you want to do is put your hole punches in before we um, obviously put the base on. So I've got this one here which sits over the top, and I want to have it closer to the top and I'll have an even border. So I've got about one eighth of an inch. Is it one eighth? It's even just a little bit more. It's more like three sixteenths. I'll just bring that up. Sorry, yeah, about three sixteenths. And then the bottom, if I just fold up one of the, hinge, or the hinges there, so you can see if I'm bringing it up further to the top, I've got a bigger gap here, which is what I want. Okay, so just make sure you bring it up so it's closer to the top. So you've got, because uh, you just don't want it um, rubbing on the bottom, which it won't if it's lifted off like that. And then all I need to do is grab a pencil and just do a proper, like I'm actually drawing around that hole because I don't just want to do a dot because otherwise my dots could be slightly off. So I actually draw around it so you can see there what I've just done. Okay, 
and then I need to hole punch them. So I've got this um, cool device which cuts through really, really strong um, materials and it's by X Cut. So I've used it in a few tutorials now and I'll share all the links. And I'm basically just going to hold that over that hole and it will cut right through for me. Like so. I'll just grab my pokey tool and just push those out. Like so. Okay, so you can see now. And then if I just fold it over again, grab my pencil, and now I can draw through again, getting exactly the same on that other piece. Okay, and then I just want to again cut those out and just push them through. And this has gone really hard now because that glue is all set so this is a really strong base. So now I have the holes on both sides ready to feed through once we come to put it all together. So now I've got those two base pieces and this was a four by 12 and then I just scored at two inches along the four inch side here I just scored at two inches right down through the middle and then you just want to just burnish like so and they're going to sit one's going to sit inside of the other again with the hinge I bring one out here so it's going to be one underneath the hinge like so and then one on top just as we've done all the others and that will just hide it all and make it nice and strong <clears throat> and then also you need to bring so what I would say first of all is just stick half so just glue up to the halfway where you've done the score line so let me just do this one here so just put a splodge of my glue like so okay and then I've got this other piece here and I'm just going to put it so on the right hand side so the left put it on this right hand side of the under piece if you're doing what I'm doing using like these scrap pieces like so so I'm only doing that half piece and then again I'm just lining that up all in place there so that's all nice and strong and then I just need to open up these two pieces again just put glue on one side for the minute and then this piece here is going to come over so you need to put glue on this hinge here like so and then trying to do this on camera so lift the base up sit the corners the corner of the hinge there that score line I'm sitting with the corner of the base just in there okay stick that down Be a bit, bit mucky and then bring up this piece here so it's all concealed like so just kind of hold it in place for the so minute. So I've probably made it quite fiddly because I'm using double layers of everything. If you imagine this with just single layers, this is a good way to make a really quite large stand. So this is the only way I could see to make it. And you can see now how it's all coming together and that when it's dry is going to obviously bend up. And when it bends down, that's the full kind of expanded um, width that it will open to um, and it will hold your calendar up nice and strong. And then obviously when it's flat, it means you can just move it around and transport it like so. So that's kind of in place. And what I'm going to do is just bring it down even more, flatten it. And now I can just put all my pressure on there just to make sure that's all completely stuck. Now I've got all of my pages here. So I'm just going to undo one at a time. And you just want to grab your stand and just thread through each of those. I can feel it starting to lift off the bottom already which is good. There we go. Now I've spread out the, back, the stand underneath and I have a perfect calendar and that is, I'm so pleased with that, you can see it there 
how it stands up. It's proper DIY, it's proper makeshift, and I love it. It's what crafting's all about, and it's perfect. It does what I want it to do. It's the size that I need it to be, and it's great to just kind of glance over, and then I can just, without, you can just lift it up. It's got plenty of fr free space there to kind of bend right over like so, that will sit on the back and then you're on to your next month. And like I said, if you are moving or traveling, it folds completely flat so you can fit it into a file or your briefcase or something like that if you do need to transport it. And again, just move it over, it takes me to my next month. So I am super pleased with that. I hope you like this idea. I will also attach the, um, the other calendar that I done, I totally forgot the name from it, it's gone from my mind, but I'll attach that one as well um, at the end of this video in case you want to do something like that as well. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this one, have a fantastic new year and I'll catch you in 2018, bye.